You guys partake? No, thank you. I'll partake. Are you sure? <laughs> it's pretty strong shit. I get it from the military, actually. This is the stuff that killed Dylan. Hope Dylan's not dead. Isn't he? Hit me. Okay, just, uh, you know, go easy on it. A little bit, a little bit. It's not so bad. Uh, to be fair, it takes a while to be absorbed. In <laughs> We should cook up some sausages. Do we have any sausages? Uh, what do you mean by that? No. Why do you guys hate me? Can we cook up some sausages? Oh, I have wasps in my brain! <laughs> She'll be fine. That happened to me the first time. Ahoy, tent pirates, plant parents, conscious consumers, and the morbidly curious. Welcome to Cultivation Conversation, a podcast for growers by growers. Come chat with our hosts, Captain Autoflower, the real green monster, and myself, Girl Go Grow. Grab a bouquet of your favorite flowers, apparatus of choice, and don't forget the fire while I tell you about the special companies that help keep this ship afloat. We are busy people and we demand the best for our plants. So all three of us automate our grows with Autopots. Available in over 63 countries, gravity powered Autopot systems rely on no pumps, no timers, and no power to operate. This plant driven automated watering is so precise, it will reduce consumption of feed while increasing yield. An effective and efficient way to delegate a little responsibility. Let your plants feed themselves. Use code CC10 at autopot-usa.com. If quality is the name of your game, look no further than AC Infinity. AC Infinity's grow tents, lights, accessories, and ventilation systems offer reliability and affordability along with total environmental control. Use code CULTIVATION on acinfinity.com to save even more. Frass Valley produces the highest quality superworm frass. Naturally strengthen your plants and enhance their resistance to pests and disease. Use code CC10 at frassvalley.com. We are big fans of Mass Hydroponics. Whether you're a local in Massachusetts or accessing their full online catalog, they are your one-stop shop for all of your growing needs. Use code CC10 at mass-hydro.com. What is going on, everybody out there in podcast land? Happy Tuesday. Hello, my darlings. Oh, no. Oh, no, monster. I know. You scared the shit out of me during the intro. I was like, uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> We're already getting the fuzzies from you. He's out right. there in his remote location. Damn you. Damn your It'll be okay. Remote location. It'll be okay. Up right there. What you got in the Dr. Dabber monster? Um, this is just like another kitchen sink, right? Word. Yeah, that, you see, he sounds all right. He, we'll work with what we got. <clears throat> um, by the way, man, your beard is looking excellent, I must say. Thank you. Well trimmed. <laughs> Quaffed, even. I actually haven't nice. trimmed much of it at all, to be honest with you. Man, looking good. And... G3, pleasure to see you. How was your Never. vacay? Fabulous. It was lovely. It was good to get away. Hell good to yeah. be back, too. Yeah, got to get back to the grind, you know? Yeah, my plants were very mad at me. Really? Mad. Yeah. Well, only half of them are on auto pods. So oh. those plants were mad. <laughs> those <at> plants <laughs> were happy. The ones in the auto pods were fine. The other ones were not happy. We got there. Well, right on. I mean, you know, listen, that's 
if anyone out there is auto pot curious, it being vacation season and all, now is the perfect time to try a system out. Like get a little one of their like made for vacation watering systems, even, Mm -hmm. you know, easy. I think it's called easy to go, easy to go, if I'm not mistaken. And that gets you like they're they're little like, you know, it's a minimalist setup that'll just heard while you're away Mm -hmm. just to see that that works. Step it up to a bigger system if you want. Yeah, uh, it does work. I can guarantee you that. Yeah, my yeah. blue bears were in the auto pots and they did not care if I was here or not. <laughs> Couldn't care less. Oh, I'm sure they I'm sure they cared. I mean No, they didn't. <laughs> they they, <laughs> they had everything they needed. Squealed for joy just in a frequency you can't hear as soon as you open that tent for the first time when you came back. I'm sure they did. They probably missed their music, to tell you the truth. So Right. I mean, what what kind of music are you playing them typically? Well, it depends on if I'm down there. And if I'm down there, they listen to what I'm listening to. If gotcha. I'm not down there and I'm just like putting on a playlist for them, I usually go with um, a specific Hertz frequency. 520, yeah, there's solfeggio like tones and all mm-hmm. that stuff. Yeah, nice. Cool, cool. Yeah. I just have like a little Alexa in down here and it just plays. I just tell her to do it and she does it for the plants. It's super easy. Automated music. Right? Yeah, everything's getting automated. Skynet's taking over soon yeah. enough. Don't worry. It's all coming to an end. I don't trust those Amazon Alexas. They're not allowed in my house. Of all the things that you don't trust, you literally have a tiny spy device that you carry with you everywhere. <laughs> and you're yeah, worried about I Alexa? I don't leave that Siri activation <laughs> shit on either. Mm. Um, I don't want something odd, like listening, like, at least I'm giving permission to it to listen all the fuck. Oh, my sweet summer child. Hey. <laughs> They're listening <sighs> to you anyway. Still listening. If they, they don't if they... care if you say not No, but to. like there's been <laughs> fucked up shit that's happened with those. You can look it up. I'll find the story for you. There was one, one instance where a husband and wife were talking about their flooring guy. And it recorded the whole conversation, transcribed it, and sent it to the flooring guy. <laughs> yeah it sounds like um that seems like there's some human involvement like a in virus it. installed by the flooring guy i don't know <laughs> no it was true in amazon it's it, the it wrong awful. business yeah. granted That's it was funny. in the beginning of the amazon echo bullshit but uh, alexa but yeah uh, um, I, you know i it, for what it's worth i don't trust that stuff either but uh, i i do also agree right, with g3 like it. yeah i mean there's you're not going to really stop can't it. Stop it. Right on. Just embrace it. Embrace it. Um, what d- dare I even ask what you are smoking on tonight, G3? Are you still in Mango Smile Land? No, no. Oh, Mango is long gone. Oh, long gone. I saved like one joint for like my first smoke on vacation, and that that was it. Mm. Gone. Mm-hmm. This. Unfortunately, is dispensary bud. We're in full on bankruptcy until these blueberries dry out. So, all right. Well, you and your family, you got to come up to Mikasa because I got four massive fucking plants still in bins that need to be trimmed. (laughs) Are you putting me to work? I will put you to work. You can take, hey, some, take home I'll some bank with you. I mean, really, it, well, we can, you know, watch a movie, like listen to some music, whatever. We'll hang out. Like, I, I honestly, like, I, I, I'm being serious. Like, I need some help. Um, I'm happy to do it. Absolutely. Like, sure. I just took these blueberries down, and they were a pain in the ass. So, but I, I do, it. I do want to also just acknowledge the term you just coined. Yeah. Bank I didn't coin it. I mean, I've, I heard it. I don't even remember. I heard it. I can't cite my source, but it's the most appropriate term. You're bankrupt. It's, it's like bankruptcy. when you spin the wheel on Wheel of Fortune. And like, wah, yeah. Wah, wah. I mean, I'm not completely yet. I have like, bankrupt. I have access to dispensary stuff. You know, I'm a medical card holder. So. Yeah, right on. I mean, I'm not completely out. I'm just bankrupt. All right. Well. I'm missing that. I'm offering you. Uh, I'm put. I'm offering you work for weed program. I accept. All right, all right. Because man, I do have some trimmed. 
All right. And I'm, I'm like super, super happy with it. I got to say, let me show you a little bit of what Please I'm do. working with here. This is just Ooh. right off the top of the jar. Nice bright green frosty. Say it again. Now you're free. Oh, no. Everybody, let me, knock on hey, let me give you a tip cap. I just did it and it should help you too. If you change your camera settings to the 720p, you'll use less bandwidth and you won't stutter. All right. I'll try that out. Um, not so to go is... back, backwards, but uh, Outcast brought up a, a good point here about these Alexas. And this, is, this just happened recently. There was a couple, um, they got their whole Amazon cu- sh- account shut down and taken away from them for mistakenly saying a racial slur to an Amazon delivery driver and they didn't even say it. This just happened like a couple huh. weeks ago. Well, like oh, he, they, they thought, thought he, he said they, something and he didn't. Yeah, he did. like the delivery driver accused him of saying something and um, Amazon shut down his whole smart home because like uh, it was powered by Alexa and he couldn't like do shit. shit. So, oh my God. Yeah. So yeah, careful it's... about being dependent on Alexa. That's all. For sure. I mean, just like they, you can get canceled for a bunch of bullshit, like my Instagram account. Yeah. I'll like, tell my like, plants to watch their pieces. If you and insist cues. on using like an automated assistant, I don't think Alexa is the one to be dependent on. That's all I'm saying. Word. Well, I, I'll agree with you there. I'll cheers to that, even. Man, and I got to give a big shout out to Charles Budkowski for sending me this nice beer called. Apical Dominance. Ah, uh-huh, that's pretty cool. cool. Right? What a great name. From uh, Russian River Brewer Brewery. It's like a one of those Gucci beers right here. You can't get this where we're from. And I thought it was so fucking cool, you know, that like just to name the beer Apical Dominance, you know, t- a term that like only growers know. You know what I mean? I don't think anyone knows what that means outside of our little little club, right? No, and I, I can't even imagine someone like going up to a bar trying to pronounce this, like seeing it on the beer list. You know what I mean? Yeah. Let alone like knowing what it is. So it's really cool, and um, it's probably like a limited release. You know, you're not going to see it in a lot of stores because like only some that there ain't going to be many people that will look at that and like like oh I'm going to go for that one. They don't even know what the fuck it means. Right. I I mean. I don't even, yeah, I'm not sure how many bars will even have that on tap, to be honest, but super cool. You know, I thought I was like inspired by it, to be honest. I was like, I have to drink this during the show and we have to kind of like talk a little bit about what that means for all of us growers. Before we go there, though, before we go there. I do want to. I, I I was I was talking about the blueberry, no violet Beauregard that I'm smoking on, and um, mm, that's all I have to say. Like it is phenomenal. Like, um, you know, photo period quality, and I will be the first person to tell you, auto flowers have come a long way from where they started. However, there still remains a gap. Between mm-hmm. top tier photo period quality and top tier auto flower quality. Closing and quickly. Closing quickly. Closing, closing, but you know, I maybe not as quickly as you might think, to be honest. I mean, every time someone makes a new photo period cross, it's arguably taking it further, right? Like taking another big step forward. And then auto flowers have to catch up a little bit. I'm don't get me wrong, guys. I love autos. I'm, I'm not trying to sit, disparage them in any way. However, there's still a little bit of a gap. However you want to quantify it. Like, I think Monster was even saying before the show, you know, it's like, even if you breed an auto flower, like as well as you possibly can, and make all the right, right selections and do everything the right way. Like, it's still going to have ruderalis genes in it there's just nothing you can do so like the hundred percent of an auto flower is still 95 percent of a photo period 
just the way it is. Yeah, and, and make, I, I, think rules. I think it'll always continue to be that way. But the the problem, like when when I hear people shitting on autos, I'm like, dude, you've never seen a good quality grown auto, or you've never smoked like a good quality grown auto. Most of the like the quality grown shit, like people can't tell. Like I like when I give people flour that's auto flour and they smoke it, it gets them high. Like they don't know if it's auto flour or not. Like. And I'll agree with you on that. Like, you know, it's it would take a true, like a true connoisseur, a true like, what do they call them? The the Gangiers, <laughs> like this, like the sommelier type type guys of the the cannabis world. Just like they smell it and they're like, oh yes, this uh, came from a field that was partially a little too dry late in the season. Uh, you know, nitrogen fed from uh, bat guano and f- from about the uh, you know, western side of Washington State, outdoor grown 2016. Can you do, I mean, it, unless you can do that, no, you're not going to be able to tell well, me the difference. I, I think where, where autos are, are still like it's not the THC percentage, right? It's it's usually to me it's the it's the terps. terps yeah. Like the the finest quality tasting herb I've ever smoked has been photo. That's just the way it is. But like there's been autos I've smoked that like literally cripple me. Like if I want to get super super stoned right now, like I like, and I think it's a combination of the other cannabinoids that are higher in autos. Like for instance, there's generally a higher CBN content with auto flowers. Um, which it can be more medicinal and more kind of like, you know, knock you back a little bit. So um, I, I don't know. I, I just get enraged when people shit on them. Like I, I, and it's funny too. They'll all say the same thing. Like, cause everybody's knows that like Mephisto is the top dog, generally speaking. Right. You can't really argue with that. They've been around forever. Oh, I've grown hundreds of Mephistos and I, they're all, it's still all dirt. Like, dude, go fuck yourself. You know, maybe well, if you've grown no. hundreds of Mephistos and they're all dirt. Yeah. Uh, maybe the problem isn't the plants. Look, <laughs> autos are harder to grow the right way than a photo. If you True. want an auto to come out and be fire, you have to be more of a talented grower than a than a photo period grower. And that may be controversial, but I, look at. No, I, I, I agree with that. <laughs> We, we, we said it 90, that. we said it a couple episodes ago, 90% of you guys are stunting your autos anyway. And they're all People like, just suck at growing foot, autos. they're all like a uh-huh. foot and a half tall. So like, um, they're harder to grow. Look, I, I'd like to consider myself a pretty experienced grower, you know, that I know what I'm doing. And like, I stunted the shit out of my first auto in organics. It just didn't work out. Um, so it's easy to do is what I'm trying to tell you. You know, it's it's a lot easier to fuck that auto up and, and you've already lost some of its potential right off the bat from fucking it up. Yep, absolutely. Under the gun from the get-go. Yep. Hmm. You, know, you started out at 100, right? And every mistake you make just knocks off a few points. And at, you're already at a deficit, right, from the, from the get-go just because of the ruderalis genes. So if you fuck it up, then your weed's just going to be not going to be that good. If, if you don't grow it good, it's the bottom line. It's a lot, lot easier to, to get better weed with, with a photo. Um, they, they're easy to grow. Now you have environmental worries, right? You have environmental concerns growing, growing photos. But other than that, I, I think that it's an easier plant to, to grow. It's more predictable. Like I know, Hey, how many plants? That's why when somebody asks me how many plants they can fit in the tent, the first question I'll ask them, are you going autos or photos? photos, And if you're going autos, I'm going to tell you less, right? If like, if you're going photos, (laughs) stuff as many as you want in there, flip them whenever, but autos that you can't really control them. They can grow to be beasts. Right. Then you're helping a chaos with them. Yeah. There's a healthy amount of chaos. hundred percent. I mean, dude, I got now, those things to watch right now. Before I left, those things are literally like seven and a half feet tall plants. They're just monsters. And uh, I oh, wanted yeah. to put them outside. I had to fucking put them in a dry room because I ran out of space for them. They're in my dry room right now. Awesome. I fucking hung lights from my dry room. That video you saw that I posted a couple weeks ago 
That was there. There had been growing with lights hung in from my from my dry room. What are you gonna do when you dry them? Okay. Just tur turn it back. I'm to trying to time things out. I actually might have to dry a harvest in the flower room. Um, ooh, so the the dry room becomes the flower room. The flower room becomes the dry room, right? Yeah, gotcha. it possibly. If it all depends on the timing of the sacred watch. I, every every time I look at them, I'm like, yeah, they got a couple of more weeks to go, and that you know. So I don't know. It's going to be like using your flower room as a drying room, right? Like you're setting it up as a drying space. You're not drying. Yeah, it, it's, it's easy because I already have the climate control and set. I just set the temperature differently and hang. Yeah, well then it's just it's just words then. Right. It's just so labels. We even in our own community, right? Like even in the chat right now, we, there's so many different like opinions on on the autos thing. Like you know. Goonie says, if your autos suck, it's your growing skills, you know? Whereas Hank says, wait, wait, he says, Aotis are waste of, oh, he means autos. He just, he just can't spell. No, I, I, I see what you mean. I see what you mean, Hank. He says, autos are a waste of time. Don't give me autos. You know, it's, it's a preference to everyone, but like, and yeah, I'm here you, to boo. tell you. As Captain Autoflower, though, there's still a gap. If you want the Terps, if you want Terp Town tickets, you should probably look in the photo period land, like just the way it is. If you, I'm like, I, I grow them both. I love them both. Okay. There's still, like Masa said, the Terps in the photo world, still better every time right and they i don't know they have a, a certain like je ne sais quoi uh, like a, a the loudness factor is you know what i mean like they're just you open the jar and you can smell it instantly like kind yeah, of yeah but if some dude grows fire autos right and some dude takes I, i've said the same thing i know about autos i have said the same thing it's more than that though it's like the the consistency of the flower when it's ground it's like the harshness of the smoke itself when like it, it's a, a mouth feel know what i mean like that's that's a term we use when we're evaluating beer and wine that kind of stuff but it's like it's true it's like some of it's like a creaminess and it like almost like coats your mouth with the flavor too when you exhale i've only gotten that like once with autos okay maybe twice but you still got it right like it still exists it still exists yeah it's there but like with photo periods it's like i don't know more than half of the time, if you if you do it right, the flavor tends to carry over post dry. I think we've discussed that before. Like autos will tend to lose their flavor faster. Like they they're great fresh, right? Yep. But then like a little bit, a couple more weeks into the dry, that mango smile that was smelling fucking fire, not so great anymore. Like I there's just what the hell you say mango smells always hey. amazing. Pick a different strain. It loses a little something. Maybe. It does lose a little something. Yes. But autos are more fun. They, I'm not going to argue that. I'm not going to argue that. Like they both have their place. I will still grow autos. Actually. The correct answer is both. In fact, I'm planning my next run and it's going to be autos. Except um, Hank, if you hate them, don't do it. <laughs> yeah, right. I mean, yeah, like, listen, Hank, don't buy them and save, save all, all the seeds from me. Hank says they suck. Look, we got Howling Buds. He says half his tent are autos. They're fun. They also fucking suck. <laughs> that is part of his growth style, okay? He actively bitches That's about funny. their plants and they grow better to make him happier. So that's, that's just his, his MO. Oh, okay, right. In a couple of weeks, I'm going to come over and hand you fucking three different buds and I'm going to make sure to see if you yeah, can get them. The test, I, right? Which one is the I guarantee you won't be able to. Give him the, he doesn't that's... have any idea. Because he's never even smoked good quality. Like, we didn't even really start hanging out again until after I was done growing autos. You know, so he's never had really fire quality auto. Right. But. Well, I, I, I honestly, I challenge anyone to go. Like, if, if you think you're, you think you're a true connoisseur of cannabis, I challenge you. Blindfolded, 
you know, double blind taste test. You you pick up three buds, right? Maybe even we could do four. That's what the, the true like master sommeliers do four at once. But we'll keep it three, you know, make it easier for you. If you yeah. can tell me which of the three is an auto, then you, then you win. And you, but you have to have like it's got to be more than just a guess. I want, I want, I want, you know, want want people to say like what their reasoning is, like why why do you think that? But I don't know. I, I as as much as I'm sitting here telling you like, oh, the terps are all in the photos, blah blah blah. But like, I don't even think I could do it. A double blind, you know, I. Uh, terps, that would be actually really hard fine. to set up. Oh, really? You couldn't, you'd have to have a different grower who grew something that you didn't know about provide yeah. the samples for you. It'd have to be Could blind. Be oh, couldn't sorry. be from a dispensary because that it, shit is the same as hell. Yeah, like oh, the okay. next, you couldn't like, do it. There would have to be somebody stuff. else involved. Right. Like, so like you have to do me, I could do him. Yeah. You know, but yeah, there's a sound if clip, he yeah. knew what you were growing, if he knew, like, oh, he's growing Sacred Watch, and you've grown Sacred Watch before, you smoke, you'd be like, this is Sacred Watch, mm. I know what this is. Yeah, true, so it'd have to be something you didn't know that they were growing. Right. Yeah. It's a, I it's honestly I think it's a cool, it'd be a cool challenge. Um, I think it should be done at, like, a cannabis cup, like a, yeah. an event type situation where there's, like, a panel of judges, because... You know, listen. One person might get lucky, and and get it right, but I think like over, you know, you spread this out over like a wider sample size, you'll you'll see like most people will fail this fucking test. Even the people that will tell you they're like, they're the, I'm I'm the connoisseur. You know, I'm the, I'm the person that like auto suck because they don't have the terps. Well. Maybe you just suck at growing autos. Right? I think yeah. that's, that's kind of what we're yeah. trying to say. I don't know. It might not be your you fault. Say, though. It might just be your growth style. You might just not get along with them. That's okay. They're demanding, you know, feisty little oh, things. Oh God. We had a little bit of a breakup. Can you re re repeat that? I'm sorry. Yeah, I said they're like feisty oh, and my settings cap. They are feisty. All right, I just went down yeah. even in like we're we're in standard definition now. We're in like VHS quality. I don't know what's going on with the internet tonight, you guys. Sorry. Another fucking truck um, burned down a highway. <laughs> maybe our yeah infrastructure is just uh not what it used to be i guess but in any case let's get back to the epical dominance because i do have a little bit left of this delicious beer it's fine west coast ipa it's very good um what does it mean tell us it's epical me. dominance cap Cannabis itself is an apple dominant plant, meaning it's going to give you one top that's taller than the others if you if you let it. Basically, in layman's terms, do hops behave the same way? Is that why they use they do. typical dominance? Correct. Um, though hops tend to grow on like a vine structure. Yeah, right? well, they have to, otherwise right? they yeah. fall down. Yeah. yeah, and they they have they they have to trellis them like all the time, and they 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 grow them on a vine actually. Interestingly enough, I know we've talked about it before. Hops and cannabis are very closely related, but I think I have seen hop growers graft cannabis onto each, you know, node of the vine, right? As it like, it's like one plant, but it's like all these different branches spread out. And they'll I think Rudy tried to do that. Different strain on each node. And one plant, you could, and it worked. They took the graphs actually took because the plants are so like interconnected, right? And mm -hmm. but for some reason, the like, and they flowered and did the thing, but it didn't have any THC in it, it didn't have like mm -hmm. any cannabinoids. I 
this that's what i recall i could be wrong but it's like it's a pretty interesting like weird experiment you know what i mean um yeah but you're right though monster like the apical dominance and you're, you're right too g3 hops are the same way means the you know it, the main stem grows up it's like that's the the dominant well okay you can't use the term to to define the term right <laughs> that's like rule number one the the main part the main growth of the plant comes from that one part of like the very center stem it's pretty simple like we all see that when we grow a cannabis plant how it grows up and then yeah there's side branching but like very rarely does your side branching like even come w within a couple inches of that that main you know what i mean that's why colas are a thing otherwise they'd all be colas otherwise they'd all be colas but but that's why we do certain things to break the apical dominance of the plant to produce more mains you know like i think i think it was the episode with um Brandon from Outcast, uh, not Outcast, in in house. I'm thinking not out, but in in house. Um, and he was talking about like, or he was in the chat an episode after I forget, but he was like, no, 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 it's not like you know. I posed some question how like like maybe the plant like knows that like it it needs to grow that way, but he's he he was like, no, 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 it's just like a bunch of a bunch of cells competing for dominance yeah and if you it, bend over the main top and, and and you make that main top lower than the next one down then the next one down will think that it's the tallest and they all try to like the plant smart has a brain eat if you give each branch an opportunity to think that it can be the tallest it'll try to do that so like um bend, even like, like a lower a lower branch on the plant can well, yeah it only goes so far but like you know, if that's why I always encourage people to like just bet, you know, if you can, if you only going to do one thing to, to train your cannabis plant, you know, just an early veg, take that top and just bend it over and that's it. And I promise you an increase of yield um, just from doing that one thing. And you don't even have to top it. You'll get a similar result from just bending that over. You'll see you, as soon as you do it, you'll see all these other little branches that now can get more light. Um and then the, the branch that was the second tallest now thinks that it has a chance to be the tall one. And that's going to grow up and, you know, try to reach for the light. And, and you can keep repeating this process over and over and over again. Yes. Like, I was just going to ask, like, so can you then take the plant and, like, keep on breaking the apical dominance? Like, you got to. I That's how I fill up a trellis net. You know what I mean? Like, I'm constantly bending it over and, and twisting and popping and getting them, the branches through. And like one day you, you bend over this branch that was the tallest and you've bent it over. And now you see another one and you bend it back the other way. And you're just trying to fill out the, the net. You know, you don't want to be doing too much of this in flower. You know, I don't recommend doing that type of shit in flower. That's more of like a necessity thing. Like, Hey, my shit's getting ready to hit the light. I got to do something. Yeah. That's, that's a little bit. That's, I think we would call that, um, super cropping right yes yeah, yeah um which is a, sort of yeah I mean, different a little bit different strategy <laughs> and like usage you know, still valid you can definitely do that but like yeah we're talking about during veg and like you know early flower too yeah you know ideally you want to do as little training as possible in flower i mean you know uh i'll let the plant kind of do its thing you know Defoliating and, and one and stuff is, is one thing, but trying to manipulate and bend over branches and flower, that's more of like a necessity thing to me. At least that's how I yeah. take it. So you don't use like the beginning, let's say 10 days, even two weeks of flower as that plant is stretching or bolt, bolting, as you would say, in like a, mm -hmm. a botanical term. And they grow like really fast and they'll like double, even triple, sometimes quadruple in size. Right. And, but like 
you don't use that period of growth to like do some training during then too. In veg or in during early the, flower. Yeah. I mean like the first two weeks of flower. Well, like, let's say uh, you have a trail set that. up like a yeah. maybe like the first week or so, like because the, you get that like super stretch and you're yeah, it's a to, super stretch. Yeah, that's what I'm yeah. talking about. You're, you're trying to keep the plant. You're trying to still spread out and fill out that net, you know, because that's how I grow, you know. So yeah, I'm doing a little bit, but but not much, you know. You should uh, be set up already by that point. If you're not already set the way you want to be by the time flower hits, it's yeah. too late. So your like initial flower training stuff should be just a continuation of what you've already started. I Otherwise, can promise you this much, though. Any tra any training at all in flower better be done within that first week or two um, when that plant has so much vigor. You don't want to be doing this when it's trying to, to bulk up at, at the end. You know what I mean? And you don't want to put resources to that the plant needs to, to try not to, to mention that's when they're the most rigid. Like your your chances of breaking yeah, you're something not gonna, yeah. irreparably are high. Well, and not to mention, we haven't even talked about this factor. The stress involved in the plant, um, you know, is a good way to, to get a hermaphrodite. So you, you don't want to be fucking around too much. <laughs> well, that's exactly kind of while the early period of flower may be growth wise the most advantageous time of your plant's life to train it because the, the stems are not rigid yet. The growth is so vigorous that like, I mean, every day it's growing like two, sometimes three inches. Those bottom brand, those bottom nodes will like explode up to the top, you know, try to get that light. You can take advantage of that growth to spread the plant out more and get a more even growth pattern across your canopy. However, it's also the, the plant's most like temperamental phase of its life too. And it's most hormonal at, you know, like it's like a female plant going through some hormonal changes. You don't want to fuck with it all that much, do you? Like mm -hmm. you may end up feeling the wrath of the plant. Hell hath no fury. <laughs> G3 knows what I'm talking about. Even if like your even if the tips of your branches are pretty pliable, right? The bottoms close to your main stem are not. So if you're pulling those things down, chances are you're going to be putting a lot of pressure where your branches meet the main stem and you can pull that away without even realizing you've done it. <laughs> and then that's additional stress and damage that your plant has to deal with. Not only that, but you just gave a great opening for fungus and bacteria and all sorts of nastiness. Like, don't fuck with it, Dan. Don't touch. No touchy in flower. No touchy in flower. But, and for you're right about all the of those reasons you listed, but I don't even think you touched on, like, I mean, just the most, I think, I think the most pressing concern for being overly touchy in the beginning stages of flower is like that they will herm on you. Um, stress, stress during that hormonal shift in the plant's life, going from veg to flower can in some, like, I don't know if it's certain strains, certain growing environments combined with other stress factors. Like I have no idea, but it can sometimes result in, you seeing actual balls forming like on the tops of your plant. And that's like true Herm. You know what I mean? It's no bueno. Mm -hmm. And in, in most of those cases, like, you know, and I think a lot of times too, I hear people get, there's a difference between a ball, a one or two, even three appearing like on a bottom branch as opposed to like clusters of balls forming on the tops where the flowers should be. As opposed to also like nanners in your flowers during late flower. It's another sign of hermaphroditism that like is not as big a deal as something like seeing clusters of balls on your plants. That's something that's like, you should be worried. <laughs> Absolutely. And well, I'm just glad that you made the differentiation between like, because that's, that's one thing I 
hear a lot of people just like overlook like they they interchange the terms you know herm and like balls with nanners okay and nanners are not balls they are not male like they're not balls the same thing like they're not uh they are not they just don't have that about. physical structure they are still pollen holding you know, things on the plant they still hold pollen they still can do the same thing they still pollinate Manners, your plant. they just show up for different reasons at different times and where do they plant. come from that's the i run into I nanners the most often when i push my plants too long like where will you see them on the plant? oh in in the actual flowers themselves yes yes and i think and that's they look the like one little thing. bananas yeah that's the one thing you can we can all agree like that's what makes them nanners is that they come from within the flower itself from within the bud and typically that'll happen like a late flower maybe yeah, at that point light it's, not, it's not going to do anything and they're not a big deal yeah. like it's not something to I, freak I out over I don't worry about nanners actually Pulling usually up. i like to see them because it's kind of like the plant saying like i'm done yeah what's the time length for to make is it two weeks to make a viable seed from pollen. Anybody know? <laughs> I want to guys. say it's two weeks. So know, even if you it. see nanners at the, in the last week. Yeah, it's usually Two cool. weeks of flower, not a big um, deal. Um, unless you're growing like a bunch of autos in a tent, you know, nearby, then perhaps. But still, even then. could be some pollination, but like. like gloved fingers, yeah. grab it, take it out. Like a plant at yeah. its last couple of weeks of life isn't able to receive pollen and do anything with it anyway. You could dust the whole plant with pollen and I don't think anything would happen. Mm. Right. No, I'm just, I'm glad you just made that distinction. Like nanners are not balls. They're different. Though they are both signs of hermaphroditism. Is that how you would say that word? Hermaphroditism. Hermaphroditism? I think it's just uh, hermaphroditism. It's just easier to say intersex. Uh, intersex traits, whatever you want to call it, guys. It's either way, you know, it's not what you want to see, but uh, I don't worry about nanners that much, to be honest with you. It's like in all three cases, it's, it's truly those clusters of balls on the tops of the plants where the flower should be. That's, that's like in all cases, you got to, chop all those plants and start over yep. there's no going back from that that's like you fucked with the hormonal changes of your plant too much or like I mean, or it was yeah, genetically predisposed to do exactly that in an environment such as yours though that's i think you know like because it can be in there but also not triggered yeah but it could be in there and trigger anyway you just never know. Regardless of what you do. It's unusual, and I'm, I'm sure it is not often seen, but it's the possibility like, is there. That is exactly what I saw when I had the blue light incident, you know, growing the photo periods. And I had, like, the, the true light leak in the tent from a device that was plugged in, right? And I was just careless, and I missed it. I remember that. There's an episode way back called the Blue Light Special. Go listen to it if you want to learn all about that. It's like but, a fan or something, right? A tower fan? Uh, yes, tower fan. Yeah. Check all of your fans, people. There yeah. are lights where you can't even imagine they are. Truth. Truth. You can, and, uh, you can them up. I usually like to just break them. Break them! Oh my gosh! A little bit yeah, of electrical tape in your thigh. You just take a drill with a tiny drill bit and fucking. <laughs> Why use a little piece of tape when we can use violence? Actually, yeah. I mean, the drill sounds a little more satisfying. Uh, gonna You're gonna lie. electrocute the shit out of yourselves. You do it while it's unplugged. <laughs> you still you or, drill oh, into something and then plug some, it in. I put a hole in this with the appliance. Yeah, this is dangerous. You want to do it while you're plugged in. You, to do it safely, you need to have one of those kiddie pools and you fill it full of water and you stand inside of that. <laughs> it protects right, you. Taking that. Uh, that's so funny. Electrical like, tape. Yeah, I, <laughs> that's, what I, that's what I did. That's what I did. Yeah. Electrical tape uh, should be. Nah, fun. don't ever use electrical tape to cover those up. Electrical tape will peel off. Duct tape. That's what I, I, I mean. 
Gorilla tape is what I mean. Yeah, yeah. Well, I just want to make sure. We don't want yeah, people yeah, going yeah. out grabbing electrical tape to try to cover up. I mean, electrical tape will work, but that shit I will. I put cool electrical off. on mine and it hasn't come off. So. Yeah, you hey. you're get your hey. high quality. Duct tape is a better yeah. choice, though. Get your high quality. I agree. Tape. Duct I agree. tape. Um, well, yeah. So where the fuck were what we? The even? Fuck Let's... are you talking about? <laughs> These comments are fucking out of their out of their minds today. People think I'm a witness protection. We'll get into where I'm at. Um, yeah, he's not in his typical uh, monster has peed on tonight. Me. What the fuck are you talking about, Hank? Yeah, Hank's confessing in the chat right now. He says Hank is like talking about says, losing a tooth. I think he's looks slightly has delirious. Peed on my feet. Do you, is, do you, is that a true story? Do you want to comment on that? I, I I don't know what he's talking about. I mean, I might have by accident one because when we're fishing and we're just out there, I just whip it out and piss. So, <laughs> um, it's so it's possible. It is possible. What we're saying is that it's possible. Oh yeah. You're telling me there's a chance. That's funny, man. Yeah. So yeah, I, I, I'm not in witness protection. <laughs> Where uh, are you? Uh, I'm in Buffalo. I'm on a job in Buffalo, and I'm at. A hotel. I'm not in witness protection. I'll be back to my normal spot, you know, next week. Cool. Well, how was the drive out there? You didn't go through Canada, did you? Dude, no, I didn't. But I did have a really, oh, fucking sh almost shit my pants moment. And I'm not even going to lie. Um, I'm, I just want to know, I'm terrible at geography. And I didn't know this, but did you know that there's an Ontario, New York? And it's really close to Buffalo. Yes, I have heard of this. Yep, yep. I didn't I know. This. Yeah, I you see a sign. Oh, fuck, I'm in Ontario, dude. I saw a sign <laughs> entering Ontario on my way to see Johnny, and I'm like, "What the fuck, dude?" I'm in Canada. I'm yeah, like, Canada. no, 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 not again, oh, man. No. Yeah, <laughs> not gonna lie. If like that happened, I would have. I would have tried to evade them. I wouldn't. I'm not stopping. <laughs> going out with a bang. Hey, respect. Respect, man. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I would have understood totally, too. I think we all would have. Yeah, I'm like, no, nah, I'm not going through. Like, I'd rather get a, get arrested at least trying to leave than sit through that bullshit. At least if I get arrested, I'll be on the U.S. side because I would have, you know, let them handle me. You're going to have to kill me to take me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so, no, I'm, I'm out uh, helping helping my cousin build out a grow. Um, Ooh. just uh, you know, getting some shit done. Three days, I should be back. It's I, I've been up a couple of times already, um, in the past, but I was able to do it, um, you know, and get back in in time for the show. But you know, this time I just I made the decision. I was like, you know, we're just because I got other shit going on, so I had to do it now. So is he? <coughs> is your cousin an experienced grower? Fairly, yeah. um, he he's been you know picking my brain and um, picking shit up as as time goes on. So I'm curious about the setup you you're building. Me too. Out. How big you is it? Talk 12, about by, it all? Twelve by twenty four space, um, and yeah. then there's a small like it's not all for like Pretty flower. Big. Yeah, but it's not like as big as you think. Like once you set it up, it's not all going to be like just flower everywhere like he's gonna have space for his reservoirs and space for veg and then a space for drying um but it, you know it's a nice definitely be a nice setup i mean look it um it's bigger than the one that you know i'm currently like i'm working on for myself so it's a nice setup so just whipped out the phone you know did, did some quick math that's 288 square feet space mm -hmm. right that's like a, like a good small room you know? I lived in, a, lived in apartments not much bigger than that. <laughs> well, there's people in like New York and Taiwan and all over the world living in apartments that are smaller than that. I, I, I assure you. Much I think I've seen episodes of like Tiny House USA on uh, much smaller than that. So good size space. Like it's going to be veg and flower and dry. Mm hmm. Yeah, how are you gonna? How are you gonna do that? Easy, you just build rooms, partition it out. Yeah, yeah, partition it oh. out. So he's gonna have 
two flower rooms, a dry room, and then veg tents in the corner. Nice. All auto pots. Only way to do it. <laughs> Word. Use code CC10. Um, but that's cool, man. Like, so in veg too, auto pots and veg. Auto yeah, tray. The whole way. The way I do auto pots and veg is the tray system. So like they just they all go in a tray. Word. You know what I mean? And it's all one gallon pots yeah, yeah, yeah. or solo cups or whatever. Um, do you continue yeah, with here. the tray system, or then you move them into the the like no, holders? When, when it's time for flour, they go into the, to their own pots. Oh, that's I have flowers so right here. Hank has a good in the tray system. Like right now, those um, outcast plants are growing in the tray system all the way up because I, I wanted to get them out into the greenhouse, but the greenhouse is already set up. I wasn't gonna break down the the setup in the greenhouse that I still do. Even next week, it's still it, the weather ain't looking good enough yet for for autos or any plant really. Yeah, outdoors, man. I know. <sighs> we've had flashes of good weather but then it changes like you have a week of really nice weather wow. and then a week of shit Bruce. no no the, I mean, the one itself will be the, the common area but um, they're all each room will be on its own climate control you said that so the how will you draw tents on inside the lung room no, the the one room itself will be the common area, but it's the each room itself is on climate control, so there's no need for a long room. Mm -hmm. Like each room has its own split, gotcha. its own its own mini split, and its own dehumidifier. So they're all set. They're just each ready to part go. Part of the room itself. No, no each room. So like, like the, his flower room will have a mini split and a dehumidifier. His other flower room will have a mini split and a dehumidifier. Uh, we're, we're yeah. So each room is climate controlled. They're and able to, to do their own thing. Yeah, that's cool. Interesting. Um, what kind of lights did you grab him? Um, that's still yet to be determined. We're not hanging lights this week. So. Good. I want to talk, gotcha. talk about right. lights actually, real quick. So Good. I have, I have a like, where, what do you do for lights now? Where's what's Look, the go to light? I know it's controversial and, and I know people have pushed back <laughs> on it. I just buy the cheapest one possible using Samsung chips. And even the lower end Samsung chips, what these companies are doing is, for instance, I'm just going to make a hypothetical number up. Let's say you buy a 250 watt board with 301Bs. What does it have? Like 288 diodes or whatever or, or more? What they do with the lower end Samsung chips is they'll put like 312 diodes in there. So they'll jam more diodes and they're able to push them at a lower power. And just from the testing I've done with like a Photon app and stuff like that, they're the same. You're getting the same light for really cheap. Like right now, I just look, literally look for the cheapest fixtures I can find. Like those, the one, those outcast plants are growing with like hundred dollar, 250 watt fixtures. They're like, I don't even know what brand they are. I couldn't even tell you. They're just you get like out. the qu quantum board style, like Correct. off Alibaba. No, I usually go to Amazon cause I want them quick. Amazon. Yeah. So Word. we can just yeah. assume at this point that most, the LEDs, as long as they're running the correct chips and the correct diodes and everything that they're all pretty much equal. I haven't really seen much different. As far as quantum board style lighting goes, no, I, they're generally pretty much all the same. And I get the same results from like the 600 R specs that I fucking paid way too much money for that I do with these cheap, no name LED boards. I, I literally do the same par numbers, the same everything, and it's less money. And the argument is, is well, they might not last as long. Well, okay, good. I paid less than half that. That if 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 they if they literally last half as long, I'm still winning. And the, and they've I still have I've been growing with LEDs for like since like 2015. I still haven't killed a fixture. They're all still working. I've had issues where like a diode goes out or whatever, and then you can replace the board. Like shit happens. Like. And the only time yeah. that's happened is with my HLGs. And HLG sent me out the board to fix it. 
So it's uh, take yeah, it for I, what it's I, worth. I, I don't if, unless you're buying a really nice bar fixture. Um, then we're, we're we're in a different game. But if you just want cheap light and you don't care about like whether or not it has any fancy dancy features, just go buy the cheapest quantum board you can find. Okay, It'll, so say no. you want to be slightly bougie. Like, what if you want to go up <laughs> from there? You want to go a little name brand? Yeah. You want, like, a little bit of bling in the tent. I mean, dollar for dollar, HLG still makes a pretty good fixture. It and depends how blingy you want to get. It's like that you can really – I mean, some of them – look, as a rule of thumb, I'm definitely not paying you more than, like, a dollar, dollar fifty a watt. Max, like, the, and the thing's got to do some crazy shit for me to even want to pay more uh, than a dollar. I've seen, right? So, you know, all the promoted growers on your Instagram feed, all the master growers out there, it seems, for what it's worth, seem to be using this new company of LEDs. Uh, they're, they're, they're getting around. And I mean, I know nothing about them, guys, uh, other than like, I see a lot of people using them. And I say that in, in jest, like I, a lot of these people I certainly respect the hell out of too. Um, and it's Grandmaster LED, This the, the name of this company. I think they're out of Canada. Yeah. If I'm not mistaken, they have someone who used to work at LEG. There was some beef. No, there. he didn't work at HLG. He was just more know. of an affiliate. Gotcha. I don't know the whole like LED drama situation, guys. There's 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 lots of it though. If you're into that sort of thing, from what I understand, but like yeah, they have great looking lights, okay. And like I've seen fantastic fucking results from uh, from these people who use these Grandmaster LEDs. Uh, you know, however, they are like top for these lights, and I I'm not sure if we even brought them up on the show. Where it was like an after show where we were talking about it, guys. Do you remember? Like, sure. man, one light they make specifically for a five. five. I know, like I saw it. Uh, thing is almost two grand. It's over two grand. So here, I'll bring oh, it up for you. My giddy aunt. No, thank you. Yeah, I don't care what bells and whistles it has. That's just not worth it to me. That's the juice is not worth it. Is this new company. I don't know. This is what I've been seeing people use. They like, and don't get me wrong, guys. These lights look like you want to talk Gucci. Grab this tarantula Borg fixture. <laughs> it's the Borg. Just sounds so ominous. And that's a cool twenty one hundred Canadian dollars or U.S. dollars. No, sir. That's These US are U.S. dollars. U.S. dollar dues right here, sir. How much is it? Twenty one hundred dollars. And how much? How many watts is it? It is designed for a five by five tent. It has Samsung, L O L M H, L M three O one H, L M three O one B. It's got a bunch of. I, you know, oh, waterproof new rating, Evos too. new e Osram chips. You can do th three separate channels or four, four separate channels, control them interdependently. Like, don't get me wrong. This is a badass fucking light. And apparently, like from what the uh, five by five PPFD report shows, I mean, even in those far corners, you're over a thousand, which I, I don't think I've seen results like that before you know what i mean this is a badass light yeah but let me tell you how to get those same results for oh, fucking fucking way less money. i'll go out and buy fucking four 250 watt fixtures for 450 dollars tops because they're like a buck ten a piece on amazon right and i'll have more par than that and i would have pocketed the other sixteen fucking hundred dollars. <laughs> With that money, you could set up two more tents and right? triple but, your uh, yield. Uh, 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 but look, would look, you look, have look. with that? Would you get an IP sixty six waterproof rating? Would you no, have a yes. folding design, fast and no. easy installation? No. And look, how about how about this fifty preset spectrums that can Dude, adapt? I'm, you know what? I'm glad you mentioned the spectrums thing 
Let me tell you how fucking useless that feature is. On you don't any think light. that no. has any value? No, and I and I know you just got a light that, that, that does that. That literally has zero value to, to me. I, I was kind of going to say the same thing, not going to lie. It, it like, has. I don't, I, I don't use it. I just want to like yeah. set it on, on a something that's really good and not yeah. fuck with it. Kind of. I feel I mean, like do you really think your plants care if it's sunrise in Bolivia feature. or it, it has? <laughs> it, it's Sweden. literally. It's the most overrated feature <laughs> I see LED. That's, so that's it. that's so funny, G three. It's that's exactly what this is saying it can do. Yeah, this light for care. a cool twenty one hundred dollars will be able to replicate sunrises in Bolivia, sunsets in the Fiji Islands. Are you Google's growing a a Hawaiian haze strain? Yeah. Okay, well, do you know who you needs a sunset in the Hawaiian islands? With Hawaiian Me, light. Not my plants. Take that $1,600 and put it away for Hawaiian vacation. Uh, and then you'll be worried you guys, about Hawaiian sunsets. You you, aren't you the person who puts fucking crystals in your pot? You don't think that this has any value whatsoever? My crystals don't cost $2,100. No, look. <laughs> I'm just, and, I say and, I, I do it too. I put crystals in my pot. I'm just saying. No, you do. If I was uh, a billionaire, I'm just, you know, if I was loaded, I may, like that maybe, point sure. but like, no, I, look, don't get me wrong. I'm not telling you that that's a bad light. I think that's a sick fucking light quality. And look, I don't know. I don't know. Grandmaster level. I, I I know of him. He seems like a good person. Seems like he has good integrity. Yeah, yeah. you know, he has other uh, lights too that aren't that expensive. So, like, like the top of the line one, you know. Okay. I, I just I don't think you need to spend that kind of money on a light. You know what? Th those are the people that like the people that will spend that type of money on a light, and then they'll like hand water their plant. Um, like to take advantage of a, of a light like that, you need to be fully automated to get the most potential out of that. Thing. I agree. It's like buying a Ferrari and filling it up with regular gasoline. Yeah. Can yeah. you do that once just... the engine like... <laughs> I guess I probably will, yeah. I don't even think you can do that. I'm just saying, like, you know, go the full nine if you're going to... Now, now that right there... Like that. That, this I'm is guessing, reasonable, yeah, yeah. I, I'm this guessing is... it's a 730-watt light and it's $730. Yeah, Great. That looks reasonable. Now, yep. okay, now what I did want to talk about lightwise, the one thing I always look for, and and I, guys, I'm just gonna keep up this guy's website. I am not affiliated with him. I don't know him. I don't right, don't care at all. We're just using him as an example when you are shopping for lights out there. This is kind of the kind of stuff you will see. I so this is this is for the exact same for, space, right? This is for a five by five, mm, the same size. It does as the say, other one. yeah, flowering footprint. It's for it's four or five by five. Let's see the PPFD report actually tests in a four by four. You know, and the corners are. It's still gonna work in a five by five. Don't get those me wrong. numbers like, are not that much lower. They're not, and this this light would be fine for you i use a light designed for a four by four in a five by five okay you will still get great results and like i don't think you need to stress that much about the corner numbers in like any ppfd report however the one thing i do always look for in a light guys is this 730 nanometers you know what that means LS cap. You're far red. That's that's that, this that big old right thing here. Right there. I, yeah. you know well, what? actually, I, that's this little bump beyond I'm that. I'm glad you mentioned that to be because honest that, with you. that itself is actually beneficial. What that will do is that's going to put your plants to sleep quicker. You'll end up speeding up your veg time and your flower time, generally speaking, if it's executed right. And I'm I, if I had to guess, I'm sure it, it is. Um, it's often like in combination with those blues and you see that yeah. right here like there's a spike and below that 440 and that's like they, they call that the emerson effect and that's like those two wavelengths of light in combination with each other like produce photosynthesis that's greater than the sum of its parts so it's, it's really weird yeah Hence blurples, exactly. But like you're missing all that other stuff in there mm -hmm. with blurples. That's like why this, blurples are all that other stuff's fucking important too. 
<laughs> but I, don't, I never understood blurples for that reason. They were. I mean, theoretically, they look they look fancy. As a new girl, you're kind of like, ooh, this looks like it should be right. It's old tech. So th- this is, you know, pretty good, too. Like, this guy offers both. What you'll see if you're shopping for a new light, you'll get those bar styles like like these, right? Fancy bar styles. Very they nice. Run much cooler than a quantum board. I run bars and I love them. You'll They're always great. often see these types too. And this is this is a I mean, you like those quantum boards? This is a really nice one. Again, very expensive, top of the line stuff, like five year warranty. I mean, don't get me wrong, great light. It's just like, I mean, G3, you asked. This is, the, this is what I would consider the top of the line right now in the lighting market. If you mm-hmm. truly want to go spend money on a light, if you feel that these features are worth paying for, then by all means, go, yeah. go get it and, and show, okay. show us what I don't you can I, do. I would. He's he's offering a five year warranty. He's only been in business like a year or two. I mean, like uh, see, and that's I. You're right. I and I've had that same issue where like, yeah, are you even going to be around in five years after I buy this light? Knowing like the 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 flux in the market that we've had recently. I mean, truly, I chances and, are he will because he's he killing. Probably it. will. He's making a very good product right now, and and I have seen like massive facilities running this guy's lights great results okay that's why i brought them up but again you know you want to talk top of the line that's what it is i think uh if you want my humble opinion Mm -hmm. you're still going to get 730 nanometers in a mars hydro great so like so say you're a new grower coming in and you see all of these companies like mars hydro and spider farmer and ac infinity and viper spectra and all of those that are kind of very similar with each other can we just assume that like all of those lights are pretty much the same well Go with customer service i think we can i monta has said it before they're all made in the same factory too not only are they the same but they are made in the same factory i just same, same. <laughs> i don't feel that the juice is worth the squeeze to spend you know too much on on lighting especially that where like mean they're bad though no, 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 no. I think I think those are great, dude. Like th- those lights are fucking them up. badass. Really, I, and I, mean, I think well, that's what I'm saying truly is, the way to go. If you want, there's no opinion. wrong. There's no wrong choice. LEDs are such a point now that the just the base standard is at such a high level that you can't go wrong. Everything yeah. else is just extras. I, I would encourage you to get your grow severely dialed in, and then big dick it on a light. <laughs> Right. Wow, look, they make uh, one of these like thousand waters now. I didn't even know. Like they're always coming out with new shit too. I mean, I'll be I'll be real with you. I, I'm a fan of Mars Hydro. I'm a, I'm a big fan of Mars Hydro. I think they make a quality product that's really affordable. Um, they if have buy the Spider Farm Farmer version. You'll save yourself a few bucks. <laughs> no, I'm serious. They're the same company. I like the colors better on the Mars Hydro. Then fucking do I can't spray paint with the hundred fifty dollars you saved. <laughs> I just like the name better too. I'm not a spider farmer. I'm a cannabis farmer. Thank you very much. It is such a weird spiders. name, spider farmer. Right? I I never understood that. But um, so is Mars Hydro for that matter. But like, yeah, here this is their like new one that I think is designed for the five by five. That's not bad for a, a thousand watts. No, it says it says four by four, but still. How can it be a four by four? It's a thousand <sighs> watts. Because it's ten bars. It's just it's not spread out like it needs to be for a five by five. A five by five fixture is huge. That's the yeah. problem. That's the problem. Like, but so yeah. this they're saying you gotta have CO2 for you to really see the benefit using this type of light. Well, yeah, because if you push your plants with that kind of fucking PPFD without CO2, they'll burn. So yeah. I'll bring up the light that I have in one of my tents, which I am more than happy with. I think it would fit in any, let's see, 
Everything it, works great except it's for in the a demo. four by four. A three by three is like it's overkill for a three by three. Okay, this one right here, and it's God, stop doing that. <laughs> Cheap, cheap compared to what we were just seeing. Um, granted, this is a smaller light, but still, you're you're within like okay, I I, I can I can swallow that price, you know. And I use this light. I have great results with it, personally. I don't have a code for it. Uh-oh. <laughs> Bye, Cap. He doesn't have a code for him. <laughs> he doesn't have a code. Hopefully, he'll be right back. Oh, he'll, he'll be back. Um, yeah, I mean, here he is. Boom. Sorry about that. Sorry Hi. about that, folks. I hit the back button on my browser. It happens sometimes. Yep. I'm uh, running that new AC Infinity bar light, the Evos. I'm, I'm the glad Evos. you brought that up. Six or something in, in my 4x4. Now, I've only been running it for like less than a month. So I have no real reports yet. They seem to like it. But so that's, um, bring that up real quick too, because they, look they nice. did just put that out, right? Yeah. Not too long ago. In Just fact, I switched out that with like the ACI quantum board above flowering plants. That was some of the scariest moments of my life. I was like halfway through <laughs> it. I was like, this is a bad choice. <laughs> this is a really bad choice. Why did you, you say got that? It, everyone survived. Because I nearly dropped the light on the girls like multiple oh, no. times. Multiple times. Going yeah. on with my brown. Hold on. I have one to say, second, that, like hanging up the Evo is not as simple as the other ones. It sits a little bit lower in the tent too. I can't get it quite as high unless I directly connect it to the ceiling cross beams, and I don't want to do that. Wait a minute. Yeah, how that's do you dangerous. Light if it's not to the beams? No, I mean like directly to it, like oh. not using ratchets. That's what I do now. Like I just use zip ties, and they go right to the beams. Really? Don't yeah. you? Yeah, I don't yeah, know. Yeah. Just something about that like worries me about airflow around the lights right and to the temperature well, and to the beam. drivers. I, I, and I remove the drivers anyway, so I'm in a little bit different game than you. But um, yeah, I, I could see that concern. But um, even if you just went a little bit lower, zip ties will work. I just buy yeah. good quality zip ties. Like your average zip tie can hold over a hundred pounds. So if you get like, and you it's, you get four of them holding up that light, it'll it'll hold. Mm-hmm. I've never had one come you're breaking up. Yeah, you're breaking up on us a bit, man. Maybe it's just me and my connection, though. Fucking a. But yeah, and in any case, I think uh, when you bring up the AC Infinity website, it is tricky. You have to go to products and commercial grow lights to bring up their new like what you would call bar fixtures right yeah or you could just why, search why for is Evo, that considered a EVO. commercial product i don't get that i don't know that's just marketing because the as a home grower, grower i wouldn't like click on that if it's not no you would no, you would. No, the I average wouldn't. home grower is going to click on it and be like, "Whoa, I want the commercial setup, bro." <laughs> really? Yep. But like, but what if there's like certain and don't want? I, I mean, I, I can't like name off the top of my head what that might be, but just saying. I don't know like, if I, I would know. think if I was a grower and I looked through what their options were for their categories and one said growers and hydroponics and I clicked on that and I saw a whole bunch of lights, I would not assume there were other lights for my type of growing style elsewhere on the site hidden. There's a reason. I would just assume that that's where all my options were right there listed for me. Look, there's a reason Apple makes a MacBook Pro. But because I'm sure the people, MacBook Pro is listed yeah, on the right. same everyone site thinks as the MacBook, Everyone right? thinks they're a pro. <laughs> this is simply about visibility oh, in my mind. No, I just think it's right, not right. smart visibility. I, I think, uh, I, but I, as, as a consumer, I do think it is c- confusing, right? Like, because this is not a commercial product. This is designed for a, a tent and a home grow, I would think. And now this, I thought, was interesting because it's, a big light designed for a five by five, even a six by six veg coverage. 
And of course, it's fucking out of stock. I mean, AC yep. Infinity. Good luck finding a <laughs> new product. But uh, God damn it, they uh, they do make like really cool looking uh, bar lights. And I think most people go with the four by four, right? When they. Yep. And this one is in stock. That's so there what you I go. have. Evo six. And this, this one works for you. It's beautiful. Super sleek, like really easy to like clean and wipe down and stuff. My girls seem to love it. Word. No problem. It did. Like I said, it sat a little it bit lower cool. in the tent and I happened to have two very tall girls. So they're right up against that light. So I definitely got some fox tailing, but that was me. That's, you know, I knew that going in. Mm. On, I wonder this, this one does not have the seven thirty. I I think from what I'm seeing now, maybe I'm wrong. Oh, it does. It says it does. I think that's that's just this like past right of the uh the bump, you know, on the the red. It does say it down there 730 nanometers. So I do think that is an important feature in lights. Um we mentioned the Emerson effect. It's also like it's it's been shown to help speed up flower times, I think too. I think it's better executed though when it's by itself. Um, what do like, you mean, like on a separate spectrum or a separate yeah on its own, chip? On, on its own chip, like its own board? Because um, I don't think the plant needs it the whole time. Like I don't think you're benefited as much from it that way. If that makes sense. It does it? Does no? I I think these new lights that they put out are really cool. Necessarily made for commercial growers. This is like, you know, this is made for a two by four. Shoot, look at this one, you know? Mm -hmm. This is not a commercial commercial light. There you go. It, Ooh, it is fancy though. I like the looks of it. Right. And that's not a bad price. What's commercial about it compared to their other light? I don't know why they call it that, dude. Honestly, I think it's confusing. Yeah. No, I think like, it's just I, marketing, but it, I wonder it's if it's no, see, because all of their lights can be daisy chained, so it's not it's even. It's probably yeah. a heavier duty. I mean, it looks. So more... this one has like it's actually really cool. It has like a, you know, the timer built in to the light itself. That's but you can badass. also. I'm sure you can easily plug this one into like you know your controller 69. Yeah, that, don't that mess with the controllers on the lights. They're pain. It's I like, love yeah, AC you... Infinity, and I am I am I love their stuff. They do make very high quality goods, but man, those controllers the on plug, them though, itself is a pain. With the UAS plug, you can connect any light to the system, right? Uh, like, all right, I think it's just the what they're doing, and like a uh, little bit because, like, you know, I don't want to see the market cornered by one company who makes, you know all sorts of growing products and like you infinity now and one-stop shop for pretty much everything you need for growing like i don't know if i necessarily like that that's not an accident spread the love a little bit like when like there's plenty of room in the market for other yeah companies. but look look in but fairness it is appealing to just buy it all in one place How that's many competition now especially there when is. they make good shit they're innovating though, especially with that UIS system. The fact that you can fully automate your shit really cheaply. Nobody else is doing that. Great. I mean, somebody uh, I else think, is I more than welcome to make too. better stuff. You Mars know, Hydro so is actually I I think Mars Hydro has a similar system now. Of and course so they do. Spider Farmer and like the automation is going to become a pretty ubiquitous you, you'll see it everywhere but for right now yeah i think I, I think ac infinity is the the one brand that does it right yep they do it right i mean all their stuff is great quality and their customer service is good so i have right no complaints so far right on no oh, I, I use code cultivation if you choose to purchase from ac just infinity gonna, just gonna mess I love AC Infinity. Like, guys, I, I 
I use their stuff. And like I was saying the, the last episode, I couldn't help myself, but recommend so many of their products when setting up my friends grow, because it's like he's paying shipping already. You might as well just lump it in, you know? Yep. <sighs> it's, it's, their tents are the best. And they they're... make good stuff. Yeah. Make yeah. Their stuff. inline is the best. Their lights so, are definitely competitive. If not Ned, these new Evos, who knows? They'd be really amazing. Well, if you want a commercial light, that is. I got commercial in my soul. <laughs> uh it's it's funny how the human mind works you know matza thinks it's just like we'll see that and be like oh shit man that's the fancy one i want that that's that's the pro model i mean it does sound a little like more robust i guess a commercial guard is a little harder on their equipment i don't think like commercial detonates the same like kind of qualities as pro yeah but they did that for a reason they did it for a reason because they didn't want to um make their previous buyers feel inferior with what they bought they don't want to make their other products seem inferior so rather than use the word professional they go with commercial Uh, okay yeah yeah, listen i worked at a marketing company for a long time i understand how how these guys think it's fucking like the reality of it is, is most commercial I think you're right. aren't using their products anyway, like for that. Then you know, I mean, they may use their fans and stuff, but they're going with other companies' lighting. You know, I think you're right. That's that's actually really funny. Like especially commercial when, growers are using the Grandmaster LEDs. That especially we, like a smaller <laughs> fixture, like who? What commercial space is using the two by four lighting? Like they wouldn't. They, they you know what I mean? Like I could see if that commercial light was just like a bunch of 750 watt lights like boom 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 then at least you could give me look me in the face and you know you know not tell me it's raining when you're pissing on my face it, it's pretty clear to, to see what's going on there you know is that like when you peed on hank's feet yeah yeah just like that <laughs> that's, dude, that's exactly on, why i wouldn't go into a commercial setting in a like in looking on their website, I wouldn't go looking at was li- what yeah, was listed for I, I commercial growers. I would assume that would be all for bigger than a five by five. Yeah, but because see, anything smaller than that's not. You want to know why? And like, this is just the reality of it. And but no, commercial people, just daisy daisy chains the same lights we use. Look, you want to know why cap cap? You want to know why you wouldn't G- click on that? You want to know why you wouldn't G three? Because you're above average intelligence. <laughs> Most people are stupid. You're forgetting all this. Right, I'll, I'll, I'll go with you there. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> you flatter me and, and uh, speak the truth, sir. I can't help but agree with you. No, it's like, man, idiot. You ever see the movie Idiocracy? Not in a long time. Oh. It's- it's honestly one of my favorite movies and it becomes more and more true every day that passes. But I think like our true future is combining that movie with like a little bit of Blade Runner, a little bit of Soylent Green and a little bit of all sorts of dystopian future movies, but it's going to be 5% idiocracy. And yeah. Just watch the movie. It's fucking hysterical. Ah, uh, but um, I don't know. You guys got anything else tonight? No, I kind of honestly would like to wrap this up because my yeah. connection's really choppy. Yeah. And uh, he's in witness protection, guys. What do you? Yeah, what do you, you know they only give me dial up here. Well, I commend you for doing the podcast on the road, sir. Thank you for we appreciate it for sticking it out and making it happen and. People are just going to have to put up with shitty connection tonight. What can you do? You know? I mean, I backspaced the fucking browser in the middle of a sentence. So, yeah. And your connection has been pretty shit tonight, too. It's just yeah. one of those days. I know. I know. It's one of those just days. One of those fucking days. Um, G3, the, the invitation stands. I will supply you with fresh 
premium. Yeah, I'll come trim for you. I'll message you. Dispo quality cannabis for free if you come help me trim. And that goes for all of you out there, too, if you live close to me. (laughs) Yeah, come come hang out with us. You're welcome. Uh, I already, I already Mid-Atlantic my region. It's a little bit far away. Mid-Atlantic region. If you know what a cheesesteak is, you could probably come hang out with me. You know what a real cheesesteak is. That is. Yeah. Yeah. No. Um, I hate to break it to you, but I know you guys are a little rock headed over there in Philly, but real cheesesteaks don't have fucking fake cheese. Just saying. Oh, see, you fucking disrespect cheesesteaks saying that, man. Y'all don't. American cheese is the only cheese that belongs on a cheesesteak. Ah, I'm gonna have to push back on, on that. One, I hear sir. you. I hear. I've had this argument. With they are fit. both counterfeit cheese products, not real cheese in any way, shape, or form. You are substituting fake cheese for more fake cheese. If you want real cheese on a cheesesteak, you would go. Those. That's the wrong way to go. No. Uh. I love my American cheese on a cheesesteak. That's the only time I actually use American cheese. That and a grilled cheese. Other than that, American cheese can stay to the wayside. But those cheese are the two cheeses. I'm, I'm a stickler on it. Cheesesteaks and um, grilled cheese. Right. Got to be American cheese. It has to be either oh. Cheese Whiz or American. Okay. Or you could just not care about what other people eat. Oh, I don't care. <laughs> Believe me. It just made this huge I gotta argument. Be, I got to be honest with you, though, Cap. Next time we get out there, I will get out there. I want to try it with the Wiz. I, I've all, I've never Way tried it. Go, with but honestly, that's it. Philly, and it's like when in the touristy shops, like the Pats, and see it on every fucking football broad broadcast you've ever watched. You know, every and Geno's. They'll give you a whiz cheesesteak. Now, best cheesesteak from them, but that style is just like, I think it's, it's the way to go. American is great. With onions is superior in every way, shape, or form. But it's all right. Don't forget the bread, too. That's the important part. The bread is the most important part, man. All right. Yeah, man, let's wrap it. Time to end this abortion. In the chat. And that was a comment, <laughs> sir. But I'll take it. I'll take it. We, we mm-hmm. accept all comments. Offensive or not here. Thanks, everyone in the chat, for joining us. Thank you, Monster. Um, and thanks to all the Patreons who make this shit happen. Keep the. We'll talk to you all next week.